Hi guys and welcome to another Divi themed video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, we had a fantastic question. We built a hero section with a sort of mock Ken Burns effect which makes the image slide in and out like you can see in this slide here. And somebody was asking, can you do that with an actual slider? And as you can see, the answer is yes. Really easy to do. We've got to do a bit of CSS coding for this today, but don't let that put you off. Any coding that I do, I'll put down below the video and you're welcome to use it how you wish. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Once enabled, I'm going to go down and delete this little section right here. Let's add a new section first. I'm going to use a full width section for this today. With a full width section, you get a more limited amount of modules that are dedicated to the full width here. I'm going to use a full width slider. So I'm going to put that in there. Let's just get rid of this top one so we can see what's going on. Okay, so first thing we want to do is actually create the slider that we want. So we've got a slider in here, purple for a full width section, dark tab for the module. Let's go into the module and create a couple of slides. It puts two in there for you. I'm going to delete the second one. I'm going to get the first one looking like I want it, then I'm going to duplicate it. Simply go to the little cog right here. Let's pull this into the middle. Obviously put what you want your title to say here. what you want your button to say below. Obviously there's the button. And what you want your text to say down here. And this is a regular text field. You can align, bold, italicize, make bullet lists, add media if you want to, and of course create titles. I'm gonna leave mine just as the default for expediency today. You can add an image or a video if you want to. If you do add, add an image, what it's gonna do is add it on the left hand side and push the call to action button and writing to the right hand side. I'll just demo one for you. We'll throw any old image in there. As you can see, let's put that image in there and slid our text to the right. But I don't want an image on mine today. And it's the same for video. It'll place in the same way. Now, if you want the slide itself to link to somewhere, we'll hit the link button here. And you've got two options. You can put one link in for your button and one link in for the rest of the module if you want to take them somewhere else or even the same link. Always best practice if you're linking to your own site, keep it in the same window. If not, open it in a new tab if you're linking to somebody else's site. That way your site stays open. Okay, I'm gonna keep this fairly simple. Let's add a background. As usual, you've got great background options with Divi. You've got color, gradient, image, video, background pattern or background mask there. I'm going to use a simple image for mine today. And I'll use the same pictures as I used before. Nice picture. Well, text is okay, but it's kind of getting lost in there. So I'm going to add a bit of a, an overlay to the background text there. So if we roll on now to our design tab, there's the overlay. I'm going to use a text overlay. I'm going to flip that to on. And it's subtly put a bit of background color in there. I'm going to adjust mine. I'm going to make mine fully black like that. I'm going to click on the color and the variegated slider over here is opacity or see-throughness or transparency if you like. I'm going to take this down a little way so we can see some of the image behind but still read the writing nicely. That makes that writing stand out a bit better. And it's a little bit wider than I want it on this thing. So still in design, let's go down to our sizing. And we've got content width here. I'm going to put mine to about 75%. You can type it in, use the little arrows to increment, or just slide the slider down. I want mine to be about 75, I think. As you can see, that's made that slightly less wide. And the only other thing I really want to do to my slide here is just decorate that button a bit. So still on the design tab, if we roll up, there's the button. I'm going to use custom styles. I'm going to leave everything the same. I'm just going to give it a bit of a background color. Here's a button background right here. Let's make it purple. And again, I'm going to click on the field and drag the opacity down a little bit. So we've got a hint of the image behind there. I just like that effect. 
and I'll put a bit of text shadow on there just to make that text stand out a bit if we roll down and I'll also put a little box shadow at the bottom of the button there just lifts it off a little bit okay well I'm pretty happy for that to be the format of my slides so what I'm gonna do here is just save this one it'll take us back to the main slide settings we're in a slide setting at the moment not the slider setting so if I save this Go back to the main full width slider settings. I'm going to duplicate this a couple of times. And we'll go into the next one. All I'm going to do is change that to 2. And we'll change the background image. And again, I think I'll use the same images I used before. They seem to work quite well. I'm going to save that one there. Obviously, you can change your button, change your button link and your text there. I'm going to leave mine all the same. So we're happy with that, we're back in the full width slider settings. Let's go into slide number three now. And again, I want to change that to three. And I want to change the background image. Obviously, you're going to take a bit more time with your slides, so I haven't got any real, real detail for mine. And we'll finish off with that one. Okay, we've got three slides here. Let's make this thing automatically animate now. So you want to make sure you're in your full width slider settings, not your slide settings to animate this. So make sure you're not in slide settings by saving. I'm going back to full width slider. I'm going to go down to design and we're going to go to animation. If you go to design and you don't see animation there, chances are you're actually still in one of your slides. If we go back into a slide and I go down to the bottom there, there's no animation. So just hit the green save, go to your design again, there's the animation at the bottom in the full width slider settings. That question always comes up when we build these things. Okay, so I'm going to open the animation and I'm going to flip the little switch from off to on, funnily enough. And we can set a time for it here. The default 7 seconds or 7,000 milliseconds. I'm going to make mine about 5 seconds. And there's a little button underneath when, at the moment, when we hover over, it's going to stop the slide so they can read it and give them a chance to click the button or whatever they need to do to interact. If you don't want it to stop and keep sliding every five seconds, flip that one to off. I want mine to stop, so I'm going to leave mine just like that. Okay, now comes the fun part. We've got this revolving, we've got the slides, but we want it to actually grow and have our little Ken Burns effect there. So what we've got to do is still in the full width slider settings, we're going to give this a CSS class. Over in the advanced tab, if we go over here, here's CSS IDs and classes. I'm going to give it the class of KB slider for Ken Burns slider. It's my kind of shorthand. CSS classes want to be unique. It only wants to be one of them, and they kind of want to mean something to you. That's my shorthand for a sort of Ken Burns effect slider. So we're going to give it that. We're going to save our changes here. I'm going to go down, save our changes here. I'm going to go to my customizer in a minute to add some custom CSS. So I'm going to make this page my home page temporarily so I can see it over there. To do that, you want to make sure this is published and not a draft. If you've saved it over a draft, you won't be able to set it as a home page. So mine's actually published. And that's the reason we've got a save button here rather than a save draft and save button. So I'll make sure we're all saved up. And I'm going to go over to my theme customizer here. So if we go to the dashboard, I'll close out this little window here. We want to go down to Appearance and Customize. That's going to take us here. We don't need to do this next step, but I'm going to do it so you can see what's going on here. I'm going to go to my home page settings down here. I'm going to set my new page briefly as the home page here. So we've got home page. We need to find that new page, which is called KB Slider. And there we are, let's set that page as the home page so we can see it right here. Now I need to go back. Right at the bottom we've got additional CSS. If I click on that, it'll open this panel. This is where we add our CSS. I'll move this out of the way. This is for a different project. And we'll start from scratch. Okay, it's always a good idea 
to give things a title when you write CSS, especially if you write a lot of it, and the title is forward slash, star star, forward slash. In between, you can write your title or your notes, because anything between the stars will not be read as code. So I'm going to say KB slider. That way, if anybody edits the site after you, it'll make it easier for them to find this code too. What we've got to do is create an animation. Now we gave our slider a class of KB slider. All class names need a dot or a period in front, so there's the dot. And then the, the class name, KB slider. And any code I write here, I'll put down below the video. You're welcome to copy it and paste it as you need it. Now we need to open and close some curly brackets and tell it what we want it to do. Well, I want it to run an animation, which we're going to create in a minute. So I'll say animation. And we've got to give it a name. So I'm going to say colon and we'll call our animation. Let's call it KBSL. Again, that's a kind of abbreviation for mine, Ken Burns slider. So we've given it that name. How long do we want it to take around the cycles? Well, I want quite a long time. Let's give it 40 seconds. I actually think I had 60 seconds on the version that you saw earlier, but you can change this to suit you. And I want it to keep going round and round in circles. So I'm going to put infinite. Great. Pop a little semicolon on there. Now we've got to create this animation that we've called KBSL. And to do that, we'll drop down a couple. We've got to put that at sign, keyframes, because that's what we're using to build this today, what they call keyframes. And we'll put the name there, which is KBSL. Now we can open and close some more curly brackets here. And in between, we can start adding our keyframes. So 0% at the start of the cycle, if you wish. And remember, the cycle is going to last for 40 seconds, as we told it up above. So at 0%, I'm going to say, put it open and close some more curly brackets here. I'm going to say transform scale. Well, I'm going to have it at regular size. So we're going to say transform, colon scale. Open some round brackets right here. And in between, we'll tell it what we want it to scale up as. And I want this to start off as original size, so I'm simply going to say 1. Now I'm going to copy this. Halfway along, I want it to grow, so I'm going to copy this. I'm going to drop down. In between, we want to make sure you're not going under that curly bracket at the end. All this has to be encapsulated in these curly brackets here. So I've copied this middle bit. I'm going to drop down. I'm going to paste it again underneath. I'm going to say at 50%. I want this to grow to maybe 1.2 of the size. So it's going to get 20% larger, basically. And as you can see, it's actually started doing it there. It started to animate. But we want to bring it back once it gets to 1.2 of the size. So let's copy this again. Control C. I'm going to drop down one more. Remember, inside the curly brackets for the keyframes. Control V to paste. And I'm going to say at 100%, I want to take it back down to zero. So it sort of curves back down again. I'm going to make that regular size, which is one. As you can see, that's rolling back down again. And that's it. We've actually done that now. And then anything you actually apply that class to will do this effect. But it'll work on every slide that we got there. So let's publish this. And we'll go back to our page. Nothing happening there. If I refresh the page, it'll pick up on that CSS. And there we go. A little animation is working. That's a little bit quick for me. I think I might adjust that. Let's just save this. And we'll exit the visual builder because we're still in the builder at the moment. Let's adjust that. I think I'll take it up a little bit slower by making this 60 seconds, which is what we had on the original, I think. We'll publish that. 
we'll go back to our page and now we'll refresh again so there we go we've got our little slider with the Ken Burns effect I hope that's answered that question for you and you found this useful today once again this has been Jamie with system 22 and webdesign and tech tips .com. thanks for watching have a great day.